if you had to flee your country overnight in a Fiat Polski, what would you pack? In October 1981, just two months before the outbreak of martial law in Poland, my mother packed her entire life, including me and my sister, in a tiny Fiat Polski to leave the country. Too little we knew what the military would cause until 1983. It involved the militarization of administration, economy and media, the abolition of civil rights and the wave of arrest and repression. Even though my family was doing well compared to others in Poland, my parents dreamt of a future where their daughters had a future without confinement, full of available means of knowledge and new possibilities. For this, they risked a lot, really a lot, because they were not allowed to leave the country as a whole family. Separation was inevitable. After an adventurous ride, we finally arrived in Switzerland, where my father was waiting for us. Giving away our passports to the immigration department was the beginning of shredding my identity and the beginning of a dichotomy of worlds. As a child assimilating into a new culture, I felt very sad that other children couldn't understand me, since it was a need for me to share my ideas with others. But on the contrary, I was hiding myself during breaks in the schoolyard since a group of kids yelled at me, you, go back to where you came from. All because I didn't speak the language. My parents couldn't do much about it since they themselves had a hard time to navigate the integration process in the Swiss system, to learn the language, to get a job, literally to rebuild their existence from scratch in a new country, in a foreign country, in a foreign country where they had no social capital, where they didn't belong to any Swiss guild, where they didn't play tennis, in any local club, where they had to learn the new culture and its traditions first. They yearned for a place of belonging. At the age of 16, I was allowed by law to apply for Swiss citizenship, and after almost two years of naturalization, the local authorities asked me, would you change your last name to a more German-sounding name? Like, for example, Peeler instead of Pielaschek. Hmm. I actually had to think about it. Was that the opportunity I was hoping for? To finally get rid of the label of a foreigner? Would it help me to feel a sense of belonging in this country? I decided to resist the push for assimilation and kept my last name. I could... <laughs> I could not imagine having a different name from my parents and my sister. Then, to which family would I belong? A more German-sounding name might have been helpful for my future career. My first corporate employer was a Swiss company with mainly Swiss employees where exotic names like mine were rare. Would I have felt more included with a Swiss name? Probably not. There were so many situations of exclusion for different reasons. I remember that endless board meeting, for example, where it seemed that we wouldn't come to any agreement. After a bio break, the male board members came back 
from the restrooms, and the final decision has obviously been taken. How would you have felt in that moment? In my case, this experience reopened old wounds. Everything I wanted was to be heard, accepted, and included. Therefore, I adopted many behaviors that did not really correspond to my nature. My CEO always instructed me to lead my team using the three C steps model. Command, control, correct. <laughs> At that time, I didn't know any better, so I followed this in good faith. Although something was missing deep inside, more experienced, I can now say in retrospect, what was missing was trust. Trust in my own employees and their abilities. That kind of trust that makes people rise above themselves, knowing that you believe in them. This is one of the secret ingredients of a community where you naturally trust each other. Otherwise, you would leave the community. What brings you together is a common purpose, motives, competence, and the capacity to let go of power in favor of a self-organized group. Within my own sphere of influence, I was building diverse teams during a time when it was not such a buzzword, and definitely not a topic on a strategic level. Nothing about us without us was my philosophy. This applied to all types of diversity. I attracted open-minded people with diverse backgrounds automatically and intentionally. And the fun factor of bringing divergent minds together, as today, should never be underestimated. Since enjoying working together is the base for successful collaboration. And I do believe that change is possible. But what are the necessary ingredients? From my experience, it's much about awareness, curiosity, joy of exploration, and the sense of belonging. Rebuilding culture is not just ticking a box, or even worse, fitting in. And of course, I wanted to be part of it. Change is painful, yes. But there is nothing as painful as staying stuck somewhere you don't belong. That's why I made my life mission, to break barriers through bottom-up community-led cultures. Because I wanted to create spaces where everyone felt welcome. This is how I started a movement. A movement based on connection first. By connecting disruptors, action takers, game changers, to empower more women in innovation and entrepreneurship, to dismantle the stereotype that women are jealous competitors. Our community has been flourishing naturally, driven by women, open for all. A community called Wikoko, where we connect, where we collaborate. Everything I was hoping for became true by co-creating these spaces of being, becoming, and belonging. And the top three essential elements of these magical spaces are first, activation, by making space for co-creation, 
by letting go of power and counteracting this with spaces of co-ownership, belonging and collective action. Second, education by rebuilding trust and unlearning the obsolete while learning from the wealth of collective knowledge and experiences. And third, innovation by cultivating curiosity at its best. Fostering radical inclusion for diverse groups and encouraging everyone to play and experiment more. And you, are you a leader willing to change the narrative by replacing command, control, correct, by activate, educate, innovate, shifting from individualism to community, from profit to sustainability, and from exploitation to collaboration? If yes, then I'd like to invite you to break the barriers for integration, to unlearn what you have learned, and to build the brave spaces of radical trust and inclusion. It's our stories, not our CVs, that bring us closer together. And I'm asking you again, if you had to pack your life in a Fiat Polski, what and whom would you bring? <laughs>